Well, I guess that brings us up to program time, and uh, this will be my third opportunity to uh, to do something for the club. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to get around to making a pen again. Uh, but uh, this time, with uh, Christmas bearing down on us here in just a few months, I thought it might be time to start thinking about ornaments. And uh, a while back, I had gone online and was looking for some ornament kits and purchased a sea urchin, Sputnik sea urchin kit from uh, Ashley Harwood uh, over in North Carolina, South Carolina, Charleston, I think is the way she says that. But uh, uh, it was fun to make. Um, I had not done any finials to that point. I turned a, turned a finial and, and uh, put the kit together and thought, you know, that was a lot of fun, and, and it turned out nice enough. My wife let me bring it in the house, so uh, I thought maybe that'd be a nice one to share with the club. And uh, last time we went to, uh, to the coast, we went to Rockport, and we were milling around the seashell shops, and uh, I found a bunch of sea urchin shells, and I thought, you know, maybe sometime I can do something fun with those. And uh, that was before I bought the kit, so... Uh, uh, I brought those home. I think I gave about a dollar and a half for the little ones and maybe three, three and a half or so for the bigger ones. So uh, I had some, some something I could make an ornament out of that wasn't very expensive, but the, that was kind of different and interesting. Most of the ones that I had seen online or in the YouTube videos or whatever were hanging ornaments and uh, hung with a with a small nub at the top and a finial at the bottom and, and were Sputniks. But I had bought these uh, mushroom-shaped ones, so I thought maybe those would look okay if I just turned them upside down and did a, did a mushroom on a pedestal with a finial. And uh, this one is just dry fit together right now. I'll glue it together in a little bit to, so I can show you how I connect the top and bottom. I watched uh, six different people turn these things on YouTube and saw six different methods for putting the finial in the base or the finial in the top hanger on. So what I came away with on that is you can absolutely put them together any way you want to. Uh, I tried several different ways and the way that I decided I liked the best is to turn either which would be my, my base or would be the hanger if, if I was going uh, for a hanging type. And uh, rather than try to, to run a dowel through it and, and, and turn a, a mortise in, in two different pieces, I thought it might be easier just to take an old piece of uh, pin blank and drill it out and turn my tenons so that I could fit them together this way. And... Uh, the one thing that uh, that I got the best advice on, I think, came from Cindy Drozda when she was had her uh, video. She she did it in two two segments, but uh, she took the uh, stuff that we used to back in 4-H in my younger days. We used to do all kinds of craft projects, and this Mod Podge. Uh, was what she used, but what she does is she coats the inside of the of the shell with Mod Podge because they're very, very thin. And if you get something on the inside that's good and thick and let it dry, it gives them a lot more durability and sturdiness. Uh, one thing about Mod Podge is it dries clear, so I just coated the outside too, and it gave it a nice, shiny exterior. Now on these mushroom-type sea urchin shells, they come in various colors and, and they react to the seawater and this one has a lot of natural purple in it. My other one's kind of a seafoam green uh, but I thought this one was was kind of cool so I used it to to make one of my first ones and then uh, when it came time to put it together I just dropped that over there and, and set that right back in and like I say I'll glue that up in a little bit but uh, that part was simple and easy but I'll go through the turning process now. So the, the urchin shell you buy you don't have to do any prep on the outside or anything for it? Uh, I'll pass this one around. 
but uh, I just put the Mod Podge on the inside of that one. It's the Sputnik type. Looks like a Russian satellite, I guess, is why they call them Sputniks. But when uh, when I started uh, working on it, I knew I was going to need to round out the hole in the top and the hole in the bottom. So I took a little chunk of walnut that I had in the shop and, and turned a little uh, a little cone with a number two Morse taper. And then I just set it on my in my lathe and, and started it at about 250 RPMs. And uh, well, before I did that, I, I got just some, some about uh, 120 grit sandpaper and cut three little triangles out and glued them on there with uh, some tight bond and just taped around it until it dried about 30 minutes and I had me a, a good sanding tool. But uh, by having a cone, I was able to, to go in and, and turn uh, the top hole and the bottom hole and get them chamfered just a little bit so that uh, when you drop your, your finely, finial in there, uh, it's gonna give you a little bit, little bit more consistent, tighter finish. But uh, I'll pass that around if anybody wants to look at it. It's pretty rudimentary and simple, but uh, I was proud of myself. It looks at least as good as Cindy Drozdis did. And she made the point uh, that uh, they definitely don't have to be pretty to work. Okay, uh, I'm going to be turning my end pieces out of a piece of maple tonight. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and uh, I'll just uh, turn it down round, and then I'll work my finial out, and then I'll work back and get my top nub. Getting close. Some people might think it's a little sacrilegious to use uh, carbide on nice soft wood, but it sure does make it easier to do some aggressive rounding cuts. We're getting about there. I've got a Nova Technitool lathe at home and my handle for my tailstock is on the end of it so I always have a hard time finding One thing I've benefited from, from this club dramatically is my chucking skills have gotten better since I started showing up. And, but I still like to use a little tailstock support just to, to make sure. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and start narrowing down to the larger opening on my, my sea urchin which that's why I brought a couple of pairs of calipers so that I could uh, could work that down uh, so that I can drop it in here but still leave a little bit extra on the shoulders so that it'll uh, it'll cover the opening because you never can get these completely perfectly round. And I finally found a, a project that I can do that doesn't have any O-rings, so I hadn't got anything to drop into the sawdust on the floor this time.
this would probably be easier with a parting tool, but I'll stick with what I got in my hand for now. Taking a tool off the wall would imply that I know how to use it, so. One of these days I'll get better at estimating when I'm getting close. Almost there. Okay. Get my easy wood uh, roughing shaper out. And this will be my, my top finial if I don't clobber it before I get done. Now I'm going to take a second, make a couple of marks. I'm going to take it out about about so long. Throw this into show and tell. It's a pencil I made a while back uh, for keeping score playing golf. And the the way you advance a lead on that is to push the golf tee in, so. Most of the people that uh, were turning their finials down referred to this as the tip and this part back here is the onion, but I look at them a little more like it's a bishop on a chess table, so mine probably is going to look a little different than, than a lot of them you'd see. But
Now the people on the YouTube videos make this look so easy, but it scares me to death, so. Pardon? Oh, heck no. You can tell when they happened if you really watch for those little blips in the editing. But you can tell the ones that have been doing it for multiple, multiple years because they just act like, you know, it's as simple as taking out the trash or something like that. But. And they talk about, oh yeah, this is what I do with all my little spare scraps in the in the shop. But I went to Rockler and bought a nice piece of maple, so I thought it might be a little better turning. As they're starting to get down a little little narrower on the, the finial, I'm going to go ahead and finish out the end first because I want to keep enough bulk on the, on the headstock end to, to make sure that I don't spin it in two or break it off. Normally I'd probably have a negative rake uh, cutter on this, but I'm just going to use a, a standard square cutter. I'm just doing a light scraping cut. You notice I stop the lathe every time I adjust the, the rest. Shout out to Easy Wood. I picked up a, a set of these uh, little Easy Wood pin turning gouges. Uh, I got a, a square one, a round one, and a diamond shaped one. And uh, they sure do make this fine work a lot easier. These do tend to dig in a little bit. Much nicer. Now, several of the folks put an onion shape on this back end, but uh, like I say, I like the the bishop piece on a chessboard, so that's kind of what I what I work toward. And I do leave a little chamfer on this back side so that it'll nest into the to the sea urchin.
go back and just clean this up a little bit. When I get down to holding my breath. <laughs> Pointers are appreciated because I did learn this by trial and error in YouTube, so that makes me a medical doctor if I've got a YouTube degree. One thing nice about this maple, it's nice and soft to sand so you don't have to to get too aggressive with it. One thing I did learn from watching the videos though is, is you can put a couple of fingers on the back side of your finial and use it for a little extra support when you're sanding. Get that little ridge out of there with the sandpaper. I'm not going to be quite as afraid of cracking my, my finial. I'm going to take it up to about 400. Uh, It's kind of fun though when you start getting working with the the pieces that are down closer to the to the size of a toothpick. It's a little bit scary and, and a little bit exciting, but uh, you know you can figure on breaking three or four or five of them before you get the hang of it. But once you do, it's kind of fun. This will be 320. I think that'll probably be getting me about close enough. I did actually bring a parting tool. What I'm going to do here now is uh, I've got this set to the to the opening on the on the sea urchin. And this is the shoulders that'll that'll cause it to set on the top. Here's my little uh, little stump from a from the end of a pin blank, and I've got my caliper set. And I'm just going to turn a little tin, turn it down to a little tenon right here, and then part it off. If you do take this down a little bit farther than you need to, 
a little bit of glue always makes it work. Good. Just to put a little little finish of some kind on. When uh, Rebecca was here and, and uh, turned her goblet, she, uh, I think, used Yorkshire grit. But uh, I have uh, packs, abrasive sand and paste, and, and uh, polish and restore and wax. They're pretty similar products. Uh, honestly, they're probably almost identical. But uh, just to put a little bloom on it. That's better. Get it up going fast enough. If I can heat it up and burnish it a little bit, it's going to shine. I've had this, uh, this container of paste wax for a little over a year now, and I'm only about uh, probably 15% of the way in to the container, so it lasts a good long time. But they use a white, white beeswax in their in their uh, finishing uh, wax, and it makes it uh, kind of an all-natural organic type product with, without any additions or additives to the, to the beeswax. So I kind of like that part of it too. I do have my Sorby Narrow Parting Tool. And I'll use it to And we've got a fit, so that's part one. The top or the bottom, however you want to look at it, you can do it different ways. And, and like I showed on the uh, on the mushroom one, uh, since I used ebony for the finial on it, I I didn't have an, a piece of ebony big enough, so I went ahead and used a piece of walnut and then sprayed it with a gloss black paint so I got a match there but uh, since I've got this one as an example of a stand up I'm going to do this one as a hanging I'm just going to wiggle that out just a wee bit And uh, since I'm going to be working toward the uh, toward the narrower, I'm going to have to bring this down. Uh, but then what I'll do is I'll just make a button here, and uh, and I'll put an eye hook or an eye screw on the top of it, and then and then just bring it down and part it off. It's a pretty simple little button for the top. Helps to have multiple pairs of calipers in the shop. True. I'm not going to get too fancy with this piece. Just uh, 
just give it a little bit of shape. I'm going to admit the reason I really got interested in wood turning is I saw somebody doing it and making the little ribbons of shavings come off and I thought that was kind of cool so I wanted to learn how. Good there. Okay, I've got my button turned and all I've got to do now is just ease it out just a little bit more and turn that tenon down where I can uh, can attach it. Just going to get my little sorby parting tool and, and just kind of getting close. because we've got it down to to the putting it together stage I will glue this up later, but and I will also knock these uh, little barnacles off. But uh, in a nutshell, this is how you you put together one of these. It's just a, a little nub of a little little block of a pin blank. Yeah, I just turn a little tenon on the end. On, on each end of the uh, of the finials but I'm going to take this one home work on it in my shop a little bit more but I did bring one that uh, all I need to do to get it ready for the giveaway is just a little quick glue up and nice thing about these is uh, you know you can tweak on them until you get them like you want them and uh, as far as finishing 
Uh, there's a couple of ways you can go. Like I say, I, I use the Mod, Mod Podge on this one. I've got one at the house that I turned earlier in the week. And uh, what I used on it was uh, uh, clear lacquer. And uh, it turned out pretty nice. Put a little accelerator on there. And a little drop of tight bond medium in there. I have a question on your little sander that you, you made. The little, now you put that, did you put that in the, in the lathe? In the drive? Yes, I just, uh, I just, it's a, I made it to, to match a number two Morse taper. So I just, right in my headstock. Yeah, yeah, because they, they generally have a small hole in them. I'll pass, uh, pass this one around. You can see this one has a small hole in the top and, and around a bigger round hole at the base but uh, you just uh, work it till it's round and then turn to meet it but uh, this is your basic uh, sea urchin ornament you can hang them or you can set them and uh, sometimes you got to tweak on them a little bit once you get them turned down to get them to fit in just exactly uh, and I don't want to bore y'all with sanding and doing fine turning uh, because I know y'all all know how to do that. The main thing was just to say this is a quick, easy project. It's fun. You don't have to be a great turner to uh, to do one. But, uh, you know, they're kind of nice to have sitting around the house. This one goes in the curio cabinet at home, or one like it. Uh, the one that I have in the curio cabinet's got pink instead of purple in it. But... I'm going to pass this around, let everybody take a look. I think that uh, CA's had time to set up. But uh, I think uh, around the craft shows, those would probably sell for around $40 a piece. And the shells run from a buck fifty to about $5 according to the size. And then uh, uh, you might have a dollar or two worth of wood or whatever you got a scrap of at the house. So you might have seven or eight or ten dollars tied up in it but uh, uh, it's a good little craft sale item or it's a good gift item for uh, for a Christmas party or for a friend or whatever I got the shell at a little shop uh, down in uh, Rockport we went down there just for a long weekend and and we're milling around and the guy said hey I've got a, a bunch of little sea urchin shells so you might as well take a few and at the time I didn't think I'd ever do anything with them but uh, it turned out to be kind of fun well I appreciate y'all tolerating my my uh, less than stellar turning skills tonight uh, this is uh, this is one that I just have fun playing with and uh, y'all know me and my shop I like to make toys and I like to play in my shop but uh, I, I don't get serious till I get to making pins and especially on the high-end ones. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I like to share my shop, and, and I like to share especially unusual things with my friends here at Alamo Wood Turners Association and the Penn Turners Special Interest Group. And with that, uh, I'll conclude my program. Thank you all very much. <laughs>